Okay, welcome back to this video. We're going to talk about reflection and stretching and shrinking in this video. So we have, if we're talking about reflection, we can either reflect across the x-axis or the y-axis. And it really depends on where you're multiplying a negative 1 by. So if we multiply the function itself by a negative 1, the effect is it's going to not only reflect it across the x-axis, but it changes my y to a negative y. So all the y-coordinates would change from positive to negative or you know, vice versa. Now, if instead I multiply inside of the function by a negative 1, that's where I'm going to reflect across the y-axis, or my x values are the ones that will change signs. So let's go see what that would look like. Here I have some function over here given in red, and here it's graphed for you on Desmos. Notice the ordered pair that I have here. So pay attention to what happens to this ordered pair as I turn these graphs on. The first one we talked about a second ago said if I have a negative times the function, we change all of the signs of the y values and it flips across the x-axis. So it should flip like this. And notice the y coordinate. So up here, the red function was a positive 2.3, and down here, when I multiplied every when I multiplied the function by a negative, my y coordinate's negative 2.3. Now I took that one away. Remember, the second type of reflection is across the y-axis, and that's where we have a negative sign inside of the function. So my x coordinates are the ones that will change, and see. That's exactly what happened here. So we reflected across the y-axis, but the x-coordinate of my ordered pair changed from a, from a positive into a negative. Okay, so we have reflection that can occur both across the x and the y-axis. And the other type of translation or transformation we can have is kind of stretching and shrinking. So this is where we are basically scaling or multiplying my function by some value. Now, if I multiply the function, so if, if, my, if my multiplier, c in this case, is multiplying to the outside of my function, then the effect is to change the, it, it's multiplying my y-coordinate, okay? And we have a, in other words, we have a vertical stretch or a shrink. Now, if I instead multiply inside of the function, we have a horizontal stretch or shrink because we are multiplying the x-coordinate by the function. So if we take a look at this um, interactive figure uh, to kind of get an illustration of what those stretches look like, um, let's kind of play around with this for just a second. Remember I said that if we are multiplying on the outside of the function, we have a vertical stretch, okay? So the easiest way to look at this is the point. So if I'm shifting this along, notice that we can follow that point that is changing vertically, okay? Now if I multiply inside of the function, we're supposed to be shift, uh, we're supposed to be stretching along, uh, uh, horizontally. So you can see that my point is moving horizontally, getting closer to the x-axis, or not getting closer to the y-axis technically, but it is shifting, uh, stretching and compressing horizontally. I have to say that those transformations are really kind of hard to illustrate. It's almost easier for you to just have it written down and remember that if I have a vertical stretch, I am multiplying the y-coordinate by a value, and if I have a horizontal stretch or shrink, I'm multiplying the x coordinate by the value. Okay, so let's jump in and let's look at how we can do transformations on the function that we have given here. Okay, it's just a straightforward function. We just, we first want to identify though, even though we know um, several different transformations that could take place, we have to know what that parent or base function is. And if you look here, I have something surrounded, or I have something in parentheses, but it's raised to the second power. This is indicating that I'm talking about the x squared or quadratic function. So that's my base function that I'm going to start with, and I'm going to do this in blue instead. So we're going to erase that. I want this in blue. 
remember that the parent function of x squared started here at the origin. Started here at the origin. Wait. We had a point here at 1, 1. We also have a point at over 2, up 4, because if I take the x value of 2 and I square it, I get a positive 4. And if I take negative 2, square it, I get a positive 4 as well. So there's my points that I'm going to move around. Now the next shift I have is inside. That's where I want to go with this. I want to start on the inside here, and I want to do my horizontal shift. So remember, x plus 1, the effect of that is moving to the left by 1. So all of these points are going to shift to the left by 1. Now because my function is symmetric, it becomes really easy to be able to draw uh, these, uh, these points. Now the third one I'm looking at is the plus 3. So the plus 3 was my vertical shift, and my vertical shift is going to go up by 3. So we're going to take all of these red dots and move them up by 3. So I start here, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. Over here, 1, 2, 3 here, one, two, three, and then I can just kind of quickly reflect those because I know that this thing is symmetric. And that is how we will graph the function h of x is equal to x plus one squared plus three.